Okay. We now proceed with um, um, writing your functions into a power series form. Okay. So that's uh, that's uh, the, the objective for uh, for this um, lesson is for us to be able to have your functions uh, have your functions be written in terms of a power series representation. Okay. And um, this will you know, this will actually center around you know, um, number one. Uh, this will center around your geometric um, power series. Okay. And this will center around geometric power series. Okay. If you can, you know, if if you can recall that um, your geometric series is the sum of a r raised to n, where n equals zero, I think. Okay. Up to infinity. Okay. Which when we you know, when you expand, this becomes um. Uh, a um plus uh a r plus a r square plus a r cube okay and so on okay so that's what your geometric power series is okay um but in i uh, know if you can know uh, you can uh, also uh, uh remember that the sum of this is actually a over one minus r provided that r is less than one or the absolute value of r is less than one okay um what we can do here actually is that if we can actually change if, if we can simply just a uh, change um, say for example r into x then we'll have a a polynomial here in terms of x and there's a power series already okay so we take a look at that in this example okay let's uh, let's consider this function okay and um so, so that's number one, pala, but before I proceed, it. so number one centers around the geometric power series, and number two, um, after trying to, uh, to figure out how to, uh, how to write um, your functions uh, using a geometric power series, you can actually expand that by uh, writing it of using operations or by performing operations on your power series, okay, in order for you to expand, expand, okay, this, uh, this, um, <coughs> this power series okay, or these functions into different forms of power series okay um we'll also take a look at ano, um the possibility of performing long divisions okay especially if our ano, if our given function is a rational function okay if your function is a is a rational function okay is a rational function um long division simply dividing the two the numerator and the denominator of that rational function can ano, can give you a power series expansion. Okay. So we'll ano, we also take a look into this one. So going back, um we consider this ano, this function one over x minus one. Uh, one over one minus x. Okay. Which um closely resembles your power the sum of your power series. Okay, where r is equal to x cap. Okay, but it would also uh, it would also have the same restriction. Okay. Um, if you actually replace R with X, you have you'd have this one. And that also carries over to the restrictions that you have put into R. So that also applies to X. Okay. So this is now a power series. Okay. This is now a power series that um for a uh, one this is this okay. this is a power series for this function. So the function is 1 over 1 minus x, okay, the center is at 0, okay, and um, the interval of convergence is um, at the minimum, okay, uh, basically that's also the exact, ano na, that's the interval of convergence na, uh, even if you test it at endpoints, uh, hindi rin siya magpo-converge, it won't converge at the endpoint, so the, 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 the um, interval of convergence is negative, is between negative 1, Okay, and positive one. Okay, so this is the power series for this one. Okay, but the thing is that um, the power series would only converge on uh, on this interval, but the function is actually defined for the entire interval or for the entire domain of x. So the, the domain of your function is actually the entire value of x. Eh? Okay, that's the domain of your function, the entire value of x. So for example, if you take a look at this one, this is your f of x. It is actually defined for the entire the entire interval of x pala. Except sorry, except in the entire interval. There is an exception. We accept, except um x equals one, where it is undefined. 
Okay. So, okay, begini lah. Um, your f of x, your one over ah uh, one minus x is defined for all x except. Okay. This is defined for all x except x equals one. Sorry. Ah, uh, except x equals one. Okay. So your 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 and your um your f of x is defined all the time. Unfortunately, your series is just defined on a certain interval. Okay, which is, ito lang siya. Dito lang siya nagko-converge. So, your, ano, your series will converge only on that. Okay, so, and that is, that is okay if, ano, if, if the, if you're, ano, if, you're, if, if you would be writing this within this interval only. If you're writing this series for this interval only. But what if you're writing it on another interval? Say, for example, for x equals 3. Okay. So, you can do that by actually trying to change the center of the series. Here, the center is 0. If you actually change the center to, say, for example, negative 1. If you actually, change, if you, we actually center it at negative 1. So, here's what we're going to do. Um, we start with 1 minus, 1 minus x because this is our original series. And if we want to, to, be, to be, if we want it to be centered around negative 1, then we need to have this, the second term on the denominator to be written as x plus 1. Okay. Because we want the center to be at negative 1. Okay. So, remember, that's x minus c. E. So, if the center is negative 1, this x minus c e becomes x plus 1. Okay. But since this is uh, 1 minus x, for us not to change the value, remember that um, from negative x, okay, from negative x, I have added, if this is still negative, I have added a negative 1. Okay. Here. Okay. I added negative 1 here. So, I'll have to um uh I, I have to cancel that negative one by adding a positive one. Okay, so if I add positive one here, okay, there is nothing you know, there's nothing change in my in, in the value of my denominator. You can verify that by um actually trying to do that trying to expand that as one minus x minus one plus one. So you see that it's still one minus x. Okay. So, but still, but, but but my objective is to actually change the center. Okay, so I was able to achieve that, but I have to but I have to uh, to also adjust okay, by adding an additional one here so that the value of my denominator does not change. Okay, so so basically these two are equal now. So basically this is now equal to one over two minus x plus one. Okay, but the thing is that. I would like to find, uh, I would like to, I, I would like this this form, okay, I would like that form to be consistent with the sum, okay, I would like that, wait lang, I will write this one, 2 minus x plus 1, I would like this form to be consistent with 1, my, uh, with a over 1 minus r, okay, I would like that to be consistent with this form, so since this is 1, this is, um, uh, this is 1, okay, this is 1, this should be 1. So, we what we do is we divide this by 2. We divide this by 2. We divide this by 2. So, we'll have uh, 1 half divided by 1 minus um, x plus 1 over 2. Okay. So, that from here, I can identify, okay, I can identify that, um, I can identify that my a, uh, my a is uh, 1 half. My a is 1 half. And my r, okay, is x plus 1 over 2. Okay. So, this is now my, ano, my series. This is the end term uh, of my series. Okay, take note that this is still, ano, this is still 1 minus x. Okay, that is still the function 1 minus x. Ah, sorry, 1 over 1 minus x. Okay. Um, the difference lang is that the center has been changed from 0 to negative 1. Okay. But in this case, um, this series now, okay, this series now is has a has, has an a of one half and an r of uh, x plus one over two. So that uh, if we remember that one over one minus x equals the sum of is actually the sum of uh, the series a r raised to n for n equals zero up to infinity. Okay, this okay, this is actually E also equal to one half multiplied two x plus one over two raised to n 
for n equals 0 up to infinity. Okay. But this time, this series now is centered at um, c equals negative 1. It's centered now at c, at, at c equals negative 1. And also, um, the radius of, uh, no, the, the interval of, the radius of convergence here, here is computed to be um, x plus 1 over 2. That should be less than 1 because that's a restriction that we have for our geometric series. Remember that this is the restriction that we have for our geometric series. So solving this inequality, we will have x plus 1, okay, it should be less than 2, okay, which means or which implies that um, my x plus 1 should be greater than negative 2 or my x plus 1 should be less than 2. And adding or uh, subtracting negative 1 on both sides of both inequalities. Okay. Minus 1, minus 1. I'll have here x to be greater than negative 3 or x to be less than 1. So therefore, the interval of convergence of this series now is at negative 3 and positive 1. Okay. So now I have a series centered at negative uh, 1 and, and is converging okay, and is converging from negative 3 up to positive 1. But this is the same 1 over x, uh, 1 over 1 minus x series. Yeah. This is the same 1 over 1 minus x uh, series or uh, function. It's just that I was able to extend it to the conversion between negative 3 to positive 1. Okay. So that's uh, how we you know, how we change the center and at the same time the interval of convergence. Okay, so there. <coughs> so there. Okay. Uh, when, when, when you actually expand this, okay, when you actually expand this, that becomes this one. Okay. So you'll be able to know, you'll be able to verify this by uh, by graphing, uh, by, uh, by computing the values for one over one minus x. Okay, for values ba for a certain value of x within that interval. Okay, and you'd be, ano, you'd be able to see that it would actually converge here. Okay, but the numerical, ano, the, the numerical, um, the numerical computations may prove that this series, okay, would actually converge to this function. Okay, within that uh, interval of ano, convergence, but at this point, we haven't yet dealt with that. That is, although we, we know that this function, uh, this series, converges on this interval, we do not know if that is actually converging on this function. Okay. So we haven't, uh, we haven't verified it yet. Okay. So we'll deal with that later. Okay. So the, the, main idea, uh, the main idea is this. Um, we, 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 you know, we use the geometric series 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, which is the sum of a r or a x raised to n for n equals zero up to infinity to generate other um, series okay, that is um, that, that that more or less looks like this okay, that more or less uh, looks like that one that um, that form okay so we can do that okay we can do that by changing okay by changing the center. changing the center, which effectively also changes the interval of convergence. Okay. So we'll try to, uh, try to have an example, for example, 52. Let's find a power series okay, for uh, f of x equals 4 over x plus 2, centered at 0. Okay. So yung, the, the given f of x, which is 4 over x plus 2, Okay. actually looks similar looks similar to 1 over 1 minus x okay so we'll try to uh, we'll try to write this this one in this uh, in this form okay but still the file the, the, the value of the function should still be this one okay so and then the center resets uh zero okay. so we start off by um writing this as um 4 over 2 plus x okay now what is um consistent here is that this should be 1 Okay, this, this, this term should be 1. Okay. Uh, 
sorry, um, we'll make this, ano pala, we'll make this um, A. Okay, uh, we'll make this A. This is the sum, eh. Okay, this is the sum. Okay, so we'll actually convert it to, ano, to this form. Okay, so let's write this to be R. Okay, so this is where we translate this. Okay, we translate this one into this form, but still this should have the same value. Okay, so what we can see here is that um, this one here should be uh, consistent. Okay, so this should be one. So this should be one, which can we can accomplish by dividing this by two, this by two, and this by two. So that becomes um, four a uh, two over one plus um, x over two. Okay, so still verify that these two are is still equal. Okay. Another thing is that this should be negative. The sign between 1 and R should be negative. So I can do that by um, changing the sign of X over 2 to negative and then make this negative then. So we'll have 2 over 1 minus negative X over 2. Okay. So 2 over 1 minus negative X over 2. And verify that these two are still equivalent. But here I can find that my A okay, is 2 and my R is negative x over 2. Okay. So that in series form, okay, in series form, this is the sum of A R raised to n for n equals 0 up to infinity, okay, which is the sum of 2 multiplied to, this is negative x over 2 squared as x over 2 raised to n from n equals 0 up to infinity. And that should be equal to your f of x. Supposedly, that should be equal to your f of x. Okay. But we have to find, okay, we have to find the interval of convergence here. For us to be able to find that, we have to place the same restriction as we had for r in this sum to x in this sum. So if we say that for, for this sum to exist, we need our r to be less than 1. For this sum to exist, we need our um, the absolute value of x over 2 should be less than 1. Okay. Um, just, ano, just a thing about this is that I'm not really comfortable kasi with, ano, with this negative inside this. Okay. Um, I can actually have these two ta um, taken out of the summation sign because it's a constant. But um, take note that this ano, this term or this ano, this factor that negative x over 2 raised to n factor can be written as negative 1 times x over 2 raised to n or basically that's negative 1 raised to n times x over 2 raised to n right okay. so therefore we can write this as 2 times the summation of negative 1 raised to n multiplied to x over 2 okay. x over 2 raised to n as n uh, uh, for n equals 0 up to infinity. Okay, so that we can simply write this not as ne uh, the absolute value of um, x, negative x over 2. We can simply write it, write this as uh, this one. Okay. So, that. Okay, so that means that um, this would imply, the condition would imply then that uh, your x over 2 should be uh, less than 1 or your x over 2 should be greater than negative 1. And that should mean that x should be less than 2 or your x should be greater than negative 2, which puts your interval of convergence uh, between negative 2 and positive 2 at the minimum. Okay, at the minimum. But um, actually, you can, you, know, you, can um, you can try to, uh, try to um, determine whether this power series would actually converge on the endpoints. But I don't think they would because just by ano, just by mere substitution, that becomes negative 2 over 2. So that's negative 1 raised to n. So that becomes 1. Okay, that's negative 1 raised to n times negative 1 raised to n. Remember what happened with our series that had this that had this ano, result before. That diverged. Okay. So it means that it is divergent on the negative 2. Okay. And um, on the other side, um, uh, if that is 2, that is 1. 
So what is left is negative 1 raised to n, which is also divergent. And by the way, um, if you are talking about geometric series, there is no question actually if this is convergent or divergent on the endpoints. Okay. A geometric series is divergent on the endpoints. Okay. Will all, they will always be divergent on the endpoints. It is actually restricted by this requirement at the start. Okay. So, remember that. Um, so you don't really have to test whether that uh, is uh, that 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 um that, that the uh, interval of IOC would include the endpoints because most certainly they would not include. Okay. So here, okay, here, um, we have this series. Okay, we have this series again. Uh, I did you know, um this series or the series that I have written that are the same. Okay, I just uh, I just put it out. Uh, I just put that negative thing out. Okay, so that you know, I, I actually forgot the summation sign here. There should be a summation sign here. Uh, before I actually expand that, I, there should be a summation sign here from n equals 0 up to infinity. So, this make do some, uh, some corrections about this. Um, and again, the convergence is here, which still means it should be less than 2 or greater than negative 2. Okay, so there. Now, another way to determine a power series for rational functions, such as the one in example 52, is to use long division. Remember that that is 4 over 2 plus x. Okay? Remember that that is 4 uh, divided by 2 plus x. So in that case, you can actually perform a long division. Okay? Um, but just remember that you have to divide the constant with the constant. Okay? So the given was in example 42 was 4 over uh, 52 was 4 over x plus 2. So when you divide this, remember that you have to rewrite this, rewrite the denominator this way. So that you will divide 4 and 2. So 4 and 2 is 2. So 2 times 2 plus x is 4 plus 2x. Then subtract them, you'll have 0, then negative 2x. Then negative 2x divided by 2 is negative x. So negative x times this thing is negative 2x minus x squared. Okay? And then subtract them. Okay, this becomes 0. Uh, this is negative x. Then um, negative, uh, 0 minus negative x is positive x squared. So x squared divided by 2 is 1 half x squared. Okay. Then multiply them again. That becomes x squared plus 1 half x cubed. Okay. Subtract them. This becomes 0. This becomes 0 minus 1 half x cubed. So that becomes negative 1 half x cubed. Okay. And then negative 1 half x cubed divided by 2 is negative 1 for x cubed and so on. So you know you'll be able to generate this. And if you actually take a good observation of that, if you ask, if you expand this, okay, that is 2 multiplied 2. Okay. For n equals 0, this is this and that thing is 1. Okay. And then for n equals 1, this becomes negative. So minus this is x over 2. Um yeah, x over 2. Okay. For um, n equals 2, this is positive, so plus, this is um, 1 fourth, okay, x square, this for x equals, uh, for n equals 2, for n equals 3, that is minus, then we have uh, 1 eighth x cubed, okay, and so on. If you actually multiply 2 here, okay, you'll have 2 minus x, okay, plus 1 fourth, or 1 half x squared minus 1 fourth x cubed and so on. The same quotient that you have here. Okay. But the thing about the long division is that you have to perform them uh, infinitely many times because you have to generate them. Um, you can do long division if you can actually find a pattern. Okay. You can actually find a pattern here. Okay. If you can actually find a pattern uh, in the quotient, then you can actually just perform a few parts of your long division, okay, a few parts of your long division, and then try to find an end term for the series. Okay, that's one that's, that's one thing that you can do. Okay. Let's uh, now let's um work on example 23. Okay. So we find a power series for f of x equals 1 over x centered at 1. So here the center is at 1. So we would like to find your um f of x or your power series having 
a term or having a factor x minus 1. Alright, so we start off with the fact that we would like it to be written in the form of uh, a over 1 minus r. Alright, and since this is 1 over x and we would like to have a 1, um, a 1, uh, an x minus 1 there. Okay, we can actually write this as 1 over um, 1 minus x minus uh, plus 1 here. Okay. Because um, that's 1 minus x minus 1. Okay. That's 1 minus x minus 1. So that's, that should be... Uh, wait, what is that? Kasi ano pa pala to? Um, this, is, see, this is still negative x. So, this is not, these two are not equal yet. So, to make them equal, um, that's 1 minus negative x um, plus 1. Okay? So, if that is negative x plus 1, so that's 1 plus x minus 1. Yeah. So, that's 1 over x of it. Okay, so we'll have 1 over 1 minus negative x plus 1. Okay, now, this is already in the form of a over 1 minus r. Okay, as you can see, um, a here is 1, okay, and r here is uh, x, negative x minus 1, or basically 1 minus x. Okay, um, I was able to say that precisely that this is already in the form of a over 1 minus r because this is 1, okay, this is 1. Okay, and this is negative. Those are the two things that you have to check. Okay. And then, um, since uh, I already had my, ano, I already had my, um, or I, 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 already, I already had this to be x minus 1 at the start because I wanted to be centered at uh, x minus 1. Okay. So that uh, I would like to, ano, to, Yeah, I would like it to be enough to be. Um, I would like it. Uh, I would like. I would now have written this in the form that I would like it to be, which is of this form and centers around here, uh, or centers around c plus one. So I can find this x minus one thing there. Okay, so you can find it there. Uh, you can have it as this x negative x plus one can actually be equals negative x minus one. Right. Okay, so that is why this is what I really need. Uh, this is what I really need here. That's x minus 1. So that I can ensure that my series centers around c minus 1. But I also, I also need to have this 1 here and this negative here. So that it actually transforms into a over 1 minus r. Okay, so, um, so from there, I can see that my a is 1 and my r is 1 minus x. Okay, so I can actually write now the series, okay, which is at the summation of uh, 1 times uh, 1 minus x or negative. We will write this instead as ano, para makita, uh, so that we can see the center. Okay. We will write this negative x minus 1. Okay. So we'll have it as um, 1 times uh, negative 1 multiplied 2 x minus 1 raised to n okay for n equals 0 up to infinity or um, since this is simply negative 1 raised to n multiplied to x minus 1 raised to n for n equals 0 up to infinity but for this to be enough to be convergent we need to impose the restriction um, the restriction negative um, that the value of negative x minus 1 or the value the absolute value of negative x minus 1 should be less than 1 okay and that would make this x minus 1 to be less than 1 or your x minus 1 to be greater than negative 1 okay and for us to be able to specify the ioc or the interval convergence um into ano into in terms of x only okay so we'll add one here i uh, will add one here one here so we'll have x should be less than two or x should be greater than zero 
So therefore, your IOC or the internal convergence is between 0 and 2. Again, we don't need to test the endpoints because we already know that this would not, they would not uh, diverge, uh, they would diverge on the endpoints. This is how your series would look like. Um, for n equals 0, your series is positive. So for, for uh, no, that, that, that also means that uh, for, ad, for even terms of your series, the even terms of your series are positive, while the add terms are negative. So you'd have um, 1 okay, for n equals 0 minus x minus 1 okay, for n equals 1 plus um, x minus 2 squared okay, minus x minus 2 x minus 1 cubed okay, and so on. Okay, so that will be your series representation for 1 over x. Okay, which would again converge in this interval. Okay, so those are the ways which we can write your functions into a power series. Okay, so remember what we would do, what we would like to do is we would like to have your f of x okay, written in the form a over 1 minus r and should be centered at c equals 1. So you would like to see your r having x minus c there. And then you would like to be consistent with this one. That's, that that term should always be one. So you can divide if 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 this turns out not to be one, you can divide it with any number. Okay, but you have to also divide it in the numerator. And this should be negative. Uh, that should be negative. So your effort should be concentrated on uh this three. One, this should be one, this should be negative, and this should appear on your app. Okay, so that you can convert your fx into a over 1 minus r. And then, your sum. Okay. So, a over 1 minus r would then be equal to the sum of a times r raised to n. For n equals 0 up to infinity with the following restriction on your r for it to converge. Okay. So, that's how we, you know, how we proceed with that product, with those problems. Okay. Now, let's proceed with operations with power series. Okay. <coughs> now, this would show how versatile your your genetic power series will be okay. um that is by enough by actually combining them that that enough that 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 technique that we were able to to develop in the previous session and then combining them with these operations okay so um these operations include scaling your enough, your variable okay so scaling the variable scaling means multiplying so scaling of the variable with a k. Okay. This is um, raising your variable to a power. Okay. Raising your variable to a power. So raise variable to a power n. Okay. And finally, adding two series. So you can add two series. So, the operations described above can change the interval of convergence. Okay. It can change the interval of convergence for the resulting series. So, it is important for us to actually inspect the um, interval of convergence after the operation has been performed. For example, you have here this one, okay, whose interval of convergence is at negative 1 to positive 1. You can solve it from here. Okay. So you'll be very, you'll be able to verify that this is the, the, um, the interval convergence for this series. While for this series, uh, you can determine that the, you know, the interval convergence can actually be obtained from this inequality. Okay. So now the the sum, okay, the the sum of those series, okay, would have an interval of convergence which is common to both the interval of convergences of these two series. Okay. Common, ito. Sa set notation, this is called intersection. And intersection. And it asks us, or it means that we find the common uh, elements of the set. So, parang ganito siya. Your first series would converge um, from negative 1 to positive 1. So, this is... Uh, Say, for example, this is negative 1, this is positive 1. 
uh, your second series would converge from negative 2 up to positive 2. Okay. So, first series here. Second series here. It would converge here. Okay. So, what is common in the two? Okay. What, um, which uh, interval, um, which common interval do this, ano, do this, um, two series converges or converge? Okay. Obviously, this would be within this interval. Okay. This would be within this interval. Which is negative 1 to positive 1. Okay. This is a rainbow colored. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, in that case, okay. in that case, um, we would say that the sum of the series would actually converge. <laughs> to, uh, uh, it would actually converge on negative 1 to positive 1. Okay. Because that's the common converging region or converge in there. That's the common IOCs between this and this. Okay. So that, that's how it would be able to change. Okay. So you, you need to find the common, ano, the common um, region of convergence of, ano, of the two series. Question. What if you will not be able to find a common convergence, a uh, common interval of convergence? for the sum of two series. It would mean that your series would not converge anywhere. That's the point. For example, one of your series converges from negative 3 to negative 1. The other converges from 0 to 2. Okay, so one converges here. Okay, the other converges here. Okay, so in that case, as you can see, that the intersection of these two sets, uh, the intersection of these two sets, it's the, the intersection of these two sets is a null set. They don't have any common interval. Uh, they don't have any common elements. Okay, so therefore, their intersection is a null set. Okay. If, the, if, if your series um, has this case, it means that its sum will not converge anywhere okay because the first this is a, this is the idea your first series would converge here but your second series would not converge here so therefore uh if, if you add them only the first series would converge here while the second series would only converge here okay and if you take it and if you add them um, they would converge nowhere. They would diverge. Okay. Um, even if one is convergent here and the other is convergent here. Okay. So that's the idea. Okay. So so that 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 is what will happen if you cannot find any common. Okay. Now let us try to find a power series centered at zero for this function. Now this is now a uh, this is now a function that is kind of um uh, major complicated na okay. So. We first attack, we, we attack this problem by actually um, trying to find a partial fraction decomposition for this one, okay, which would be this one. Okay. Now, we'll, um, we'll write 2 over uh, 1 plus x as a over 1 minus r, okay, and centered around 0, so we'll leave r as just simply x. Okay. So... Here, you need to have this as an 1, so this is okay, but this should be negative. Okay, so if this is, if you need this to be negative, we'll write it as 2 over 1 minus negative x. Okay, so that r here is negative x. That's for the first series. That's, that's, that's for this first term. Okay. Well, for the second term, this is 1 over negative 1 plus x. Okay. This should be positive 1, so we divide this with negative 1. We divide this with negative 1. We also divide this with negative 1. So we'll have this as negative 1 over 1. Uh, this is minus x. So the sec our second problem, supposedly we have a second problem here that this is positive. But by dividing this by negative 1, our second problem was automatically dissolved. Okay. So in this case, um, by the way, in this case, a is 2. Uh, and in this case, a is negative 1, and your r is positive x. 
Okay. So, the, the respective series then is this. For the first series, since your A, okay, I mean, your A is, this is your A. Uh, A is 2. And since your R is negative X, okay, it means that um, this, this will become an alternating series. Okay. Because that, 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 that is R raised to N. Okay. So therefore, if, that is, uh, if, you want, if you have to replace this with negative X raised to N, you can express it this way. It's negative 1 raised to n times x raised to n. Okay. And in that case, um, obviously here, the restriction for um, for your series to converge is this one, which will lead you to two, okay, which will lead you to the you know, to the um, to the interval convergence to be specified as x between negative one and positive one. Okay, so that's for your first term, which is this your first series for that. For the second series, since we, we, we were able to write it this way, okay, um, A here is negative 1, so there's a negative here. Uh, and X here is simply X, so we'll have it X there. And then um, the, <coughs> the negative, uh, the, uh, the restriction for this series to converge is this one. So we can still write that as in terms of um, an inequality as uh, x should be greater than negative 1 and less than 1. Okay. Now, you see that the interval of convergences, uh, in, sorry, intervals of convergence for both series is the same. So therefore, this would be, if you actually perform an intersection, uh, intersection um, operation on them, on, on these two sets, you would still arrive at the same um, set. Okay. So, the intersection of negative 1 and 1, okay, and negative 1 and 1 is the same set because all of the elements of this are common to each other. So therefore, we'll have the same set okay, as their intersection. So when you add them, okay, which when you add them is actually this see, this function. Okay, so when you add them, we'll, it would result into this, okay, into this series, which when you expand, you'll have this one. Okay. M is convergent on this interval. Okay, so that's how we uh, how we use the geometric power series. Okay, the geometric power series plus operations on your um, geometric power series. We were able to write a a power series expansion for our power series that is equivalent to this function. Yung lang, that is just between. That is just for x between negative one to positive one. If you'd like it to be you know, to be changed, okay. If you'd like it to be changed, um, for example, this this function actually converges on it. This actually is defined for all x except for x equals one and x equals negative one, where they become infinite, okay. But for 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 x not equal to one and not equal to negative one, this function exists, okay. And since your series would only converge within this interval, what you can do to represent other uh, other intervals of this function is to actually change the center. Okay, and you do that here. Uh, you do that here. So you change this uh, x here to, so that it would reflect uh, it would reflect the center. Okay, so that. Now let us write a power series for f of x uh, equals ln of x centered at 1. Okay. Um, take note. Okay. Take note that from example, this is from example. Uh -huh. We were able to get that before. Ayan, from example 53. Sorry. This is from example 53. This one. So from example 53, we were able to obtain this. I uh, know. This um power series for 1 over x centered at 1 also okay centered at 1 also okay so um so what does that what does that have to do with our solution remember that the derivative of ln of x is um 1 over x so if we actually integrate this series okay if we actually integrate this series we will be having a series for um, ln of x. 
So that is why what, and that is exactly what we did here. We integrated that series. So when you integrate that series, this one, you would have something like so the integral of that series. Okay, would be um something like negative one raised to n. Okay, then um x minus one raised to n plus one over n plus one. Applying the uh, applying the um applying the uh, uh power rule for integration. And there is one thing that I have forgotten about this, the IOC. The IOC for that is 0 and 2. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll take it out here. So here, the IOC is at, the IOC of this series is from 0 to 2. Okay. Um, it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't include the endpoints because we have derived it from a power, generic power series, so it won't include the endpoints okay now um if we had if we actually had okay um plus c there is uh, an arbitrary constant here okay, there is an arbitrary constant here. now i would like to determine that uh, arbitrary constant by um setting x equals one okay why because when you set equals one this becomes zero Ln of 1 is 0. And this entire thing becomes 0. Because as you can notice, all of this contains the factor, or contain the fa all of the terms here will contain the factor x minus 1. So if I actually set x equals 1 here, right? um, everything everything else here becomes 0. So if your right side, if your left side is 0, your right side, you'll have an equation something like 0 equals c plus 0. For x equals 1. So you'd be able to determine the constant c, which is 0. Okay. So therefore, okay, our, our, um, our uh, ln of x, okay, our ln of x now, is this series. But we haven't, uh, the, the interval of convergence it was specified to be um, 0, between 0 and 2. But we haven't since this is this 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 was obtained, the series was obtained now using integration. There might be changes in the endpoints. Okay, there might be changes in the endpoints, and I would like this to be left to you as an exercise. Okay, to determine that the series would actually converge at x equals two. Okay, you you'll just have it to be enough. You you just set x equals two in this series. Set x equals to series and then try to determine uh, whether it converges or diverges. Whether that series ha with having x equals to okay, converges or diverges. Okay. Um, in that case, okay. So therefore, um, we'll be able to know. We'll be able to say, okay. The conclusion was it would diverge. Okay. The conclusion was it it will diverge at x equals to. Okay. So. Please, uh, please try to look at that. Actually, um, yeah. Uh, again, set x equals to here, and then inspect whether the resulting series is divergent or convergent. It would turn out that it is convergent, so that the two, okay, x equals two, would be included in the interval of convergence. Okay. So, example 60, 56 na nine, um, concerns arc tangent. Okay. Um, but our tangent, if you can, if you recall, the derivative of our tangent is one over one plus x squared. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we can do it this way. Uh, if we have, I uh, know, if we have one over one plus x. Okay. Let's write this in the form of a over one minus r. I right. remember the center is zero, so we don't have any problem about having r here to be enough to be altered. But as long as this is in terms of x, it's okay. Okay. Um in this case you will have to write it as one over one minus negative x. Okay. We will have it as one over one minus negative x. Okay. Now what we will try to do, okay, what we will try to do is we will replace this x with x squared. 
Okay. We will replace this x. Uh, remember, ha? Um, since, the, since we have already that one. Um, 1 over 1 minus negative x. Your a is 1 and your r is negative x. Okay. Its sum would then be 1 times negative x raised to n for n equals 0 up to infinity or uh, negative 1 raised to n times x raised to n for n equals 0 to infinity. Okay. Now what we will do is, this is your f of, uh, f, f of x for example. We replace x with x squared. Okay. So we will replace x with x squared. This will become f of x squared. Okay. Which is equal to 1 over 1 minus negative x squared. Okay. 1 over 1 minus negative x squared. Which is equal to um, the summation of negative 1 raised to n times we we'll replace x, x here with x squared. So we will have x raised to 2n or n equals 0 up to infinity. Okay. And therefore, this is the series for 1 over 1 plus x. This, this one. Uh, this one is the series for 1 over 1 plus 2x. Just recall that the uh, that the um, that the interval of convergence originally is negative 1 to positive 1 which will not change if we actually replace x with uh, with um, x squared. Okay. That will not change. Um, the, the reasoning behind is that if your x is between negative 1 and positive 1 okay, uh, even if you square that uh, okay, if, if, if you if, um, ah, yeah, okay. oh, yeah. even if you square that one okay, still that x is, will, be, will be between negative 1 up to positive 1 Okay, so uh, not, not, not simply no, not simply square everything. Okay. Um it means that um the interval for x squared is will is still between negative one to positive one. So the IOC or the interval convergence for this you know, for the series will not change. Okay. But remember that again this is the series for one over one plus x. We're trying to look for okay, we're trying to look for the arc tangent. Okay. So what do we do? We integrate this. So we integrate this. Okay. So we integrate this and this so that we will find the series because the integral of this is arc tangent. So therefore the integral of this series, negative 1 raised to n, x raised to 2n, uh, for n equals 0 to infinity, uh, would be your g of x or will be the series for your arc tangent. So you have it here. So, just remember, you have still a, an arbitrary constant. So, you can let, um, you can uh, try to find how to, uh, how to solve this by, say, for example, setting x equals 0. Because when you set x equals 0, our tangent of 0 is 0. And then this entire thing becomes 0 when x is 0. So, therefore, that leaves you with c equals 0. So, the series now for, um, I know, the series now for your, uh, our tangent is this one, okay, which is um, convergent within the interval negative one to positive one. Again, this would not um ah uh, here um originally, okay, originally your IOC your interval convergence is negative one to positive one. But verify that after integration, verify that after integration, okay, the series would actually now include the endpoints. Okay, the series would now actually include the endpoints. Okay. So this is now our series. This is now our IOC. Don't forget to specify the interval convergence when you are writing the series. Okay. Because that is important. Okay. That's one of the important things that is uh, that is that characterizes your series. Okay. So now this there's a few more exa uh, there, there, there are a few more examples here. I mean, few more discussions here. Okay. When you set x equals 1, which evaluates arc tangent of 1, which is supposed to be pi over 2, okay. the series, this series, actually becomes 1 minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 minus 1 over 7, which when you evaluate, actually approaches pi over 4. Okay. Now, historically, this series was used to estimate the value of pi. 
you just have to multiply this by 4 so that uh, you'll be able to get this the value of 5. But the problem with this series is that it converges so slowly. You can try this one. Okay, that the sum of the first 1,000 terms okay, only gives the value of 5 correct to 3 decimal places. Okay, the sum of the first 1,000 terms would only give you 3.14 and then incorrect decimal places now. So this series is very slow to converge. Okay. There is, however, a better and more, as in way, way more efficient way of estimating the value of pi, which interestingly still involves the sum of two arc tangents. So I'll, uh, I'll leave that on your discretion to research or to, uh, to do readings on how you can actually estimate the value of pi Okay. Um, in a very efficient manner using the sum of two arc tangents. Okay. In which um a very very few terms of this. Uh, uh, parang when I try this parang less than five. It converged to it it gave me parang five ano na, five correct decimal places or four decimal places uh, if I can remember. Okay, of the correct value for pi. Okay. So you can try the numerical and uh, numerically trying this uh, this example out, okay? Because again, uh, historically we use our tangents to estimate the value of pi, uh, especially putting it in the into computer. Okay, so but um this and uh, this uh, thing okay, by using just sim the simple arc tangent function, we just would be be very very would converge very very slow to pi. Okay. So, the last, uh, the last topic, we cover Taylor and McLaurin series. Okay. This is where now we will try to generate a, uh, a table uh, for some of the elementary functions that we know and translate it into a series. Okay. So, that, that will be for the next topic, uh, next lesson.